My name is Kyle Evans, and I go to the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. This right here is a controller for Maxim SP. What it is, is, I open it up here, it's actually just a PlayStation 2 game controller that I packed into, and um, uh, it was made to plug into a, a, a computer for PC control, and it's got a little USB port right here that comes out of it, so it makes for easy access to spit numbers into the computer. And I pretty much just opened it up, and it, since it had two joysticks, I um, took out the potentiometers of those joysticks and added photo cells and replaced them. And uh, then I was able to create a program here in Max that could uh, decipher everything that comes in. Since it's a game controller, everything, uh, all the buttons and all the potentiometers come out through the joystick and through the buttons. And these are all right here, just from the PlayStation pro controller, like the circle, the triangle, the X, and uh, square buttons. And then these ones are the, the R buttons, L1, R1, L2, R2. Well, this right here is the D-pad that I have. And then um, uh, right here, these are all the, uh, the joystick functions that I replaced with photo cells. So I take these values that I gather from deciphering from that patch, and then I am... Uh, send them into another patch and I just use all the slider values to uh, control any type of audio or uh, synthesis that I want to. Right here I can play on the, these right here are the D-pad buttons that I have. This one is on the air traffic communication sample that I have. For the air traffic control sound, I was flying on, um, uh, on an airplane, and for some reason, this one I never, uh, never experienced this before, but in the side seat they have the little radio thing that you can listen to on the side. Um, uh, this one in particular, you could listen to the uh, air traffic control, everything that was going on with that airplane uh, during the whole flight. So I just sat there and listened to it for hours, you know, because it was just really entertaining, and then I realized I got to record some of this. So I just plugged it into my laptop and recorded it and then started programming from there and started um, uh, manipulating it. It was really just a challenge to see if I could make a controller myself instead of um, uh, having to buy one at the store or something like that, which can get really, really pricey. While this is a $20 game controller, I got a Radio Shack and just opened it up and got some cheap components for it and just did a little bit of programming and then I had a perfect controller. Cigar boxes are um, uh, perfect to uh, house any type of uh, music or synthesizer that you might want to build or controller just because they're sturdy and they're easy to drill into. They're just perfect. I did come across a lot of problems when I was trying to do the programming because I'm uh, using the object that I use to get that gathers all the information coming in through the, uh, through the USB port. It comes in almost randomly and it was really a struggle to try to decipher all of that language and try to um, uh, try to turn it into something that I could use to control other objects. I think photo cells are they're great for performance. They show a lot of, you can do a lot of movement and things like that and you can see, people can see with your hands how you're affecting the sound. And it um, uh, works almost because I think people like the whole theremin aspect of proximity sensors and things, but these are a whole lot cheaper than that to, to use. So I think that's why a lot of people are using them now. Obviously, with this, just this controller right here, I can um, uh, program any patch I want and just create a multitude of sounds, which um, uh, I'll definitely be using it for more in the future. But also what I want to do, what I didn't think about before, was um, uh, having external devices that I could plug into this box and then that would replace, say, the photo cells as actual knobs and things like that, or bin sensors or any other type of uh, resistor that I would want to use. These are some synthesis uh, little... Um, uh, little patches that I made right here that can be triggered from here every time I press one of these. If I press this button, then it will trigger this right here. And then I can, um, uh, I can always, I can control that in many different ways. Like with amplitude modulation right here, I got this one, this photo cell that controls it and changes it. Then I'm um, uh, filters also right here. 
I got a low pass filter on it. And then uh, and then for another sample for the air communication one, I've got speed control right here on this one. And then uh, then modulation right here again on that one. Depending on the light levels, it's they're always changing. So depending on where I'm going to perform it. So what I added in parallel to these photo cells is these little um, uh, potentiometers. And what I can do is twist these, and it depends. It gives a value how much the uh, potentiometer is going to receive. And so then I can crank it up for really, really low light levels, and so I can get more into it. Or if I've got something that's really, really bright, I can turn it down and just get the perfect amount in there, along with the programming also and adding ranges and things like that inside Max, then I can um, uh, find a perfect uh, perfect medium for it. Like I use a um, uh, M Audio trigger finger to control my dynamics also while, um, uh, while running this patch. And then I control all the, um, uh, the input and um, uh, all the modulation and everything with this.